Please stop clicking! Please! Please stop! Get please! Out, you stop. Moron. Please! Please! Stop me! To the police. Dragging you away from anything, Doctor. Never bothered you before, Harry. Oh, I would hate to see that lovely outfit get messy. How do you do? I'm Jane Halifax. Carl Sankovich. Right, there you go. We'll be across the hall. Harvey Masters, QC. Should have been a judge. Passed over by the last Labor government because of his extreme conservatism. Member of innumerable boards and charities about as blue blood as they get. Who found the body? It was reported by his homosexual lover. Was Masters a known homosexual? Respectable family man, elder of the church, what do you think? So, who's the lover? Anyone conspicuous? Simon Laser. The gossip columnist? Well, I think he'd call himself something grander than that. The gossip columnist. <gasps> well, you're going to have your work cut out for you keeping this one quiet. Tell me about it. So is Laser a suspect? Well, we're calling him a witness at this stage. He maintains he arrived just after it happened and that Masters literally died in his arms, which accounts for the fact that he was covered in Masters' blood. Do you believe him? Harry! Estimated time of death was between 7 and 9 p.m. Hmm. Laser didn't report it till 10.45. Did he see anyone else? Well, he says not, but he'd lost his spectacles. We think that's them there. And the reason I'm here? Well, Laser thinks it's his fault that Masters was killed. He says that he, Laser, received a kind of death threat. What do you mean, a kind of a death threat? Well, a threat that was named at Laser, but at his friends. The letter said something along the lines of, you killed my best friend, now I'm going to kill yours. All of them. So you've interviewed him yourself? Absolutely. And? Well, he's in shock, isn't he? Oh, is he? Well, he's either foxing, he's guilty, or he's pissing me around. Well, there's Dave. I'd prefer my own. I'm sorry, sir. Their evidence. You could always turn out the light. Ah, oh, thanks, man. Hello.
Mr. Laser, hi. I'm Dr. Jane Halifax. I didn't know I needed a doctor. I'm a forensic psychiatrist. Why would I need a psychiatrist? Well, we just thought we'd see how you're travelling. How I'm travelling? <laughs> oh, there's, there's a question. Well, I, I don't have my spectacles, without which I'm almost totally blind. I, I'm wearing this because my outfit was inconveniently drenched in blood. I'm sitting in a room with a light bright enough to photosynthesize marijuana. I came here to report the murder of my friend, about which, by the way, I'm more than a little upset. And the police, God bless their polyester, are treating me like the bloody stuck Okay, uh... How about I turn off this light? Then you can get rid of those spectacles. Good. Now I can see who I'm talking to. That must have been awful. How did you meet Mr. Masters? What's that got to do with anything? Oh, just thought I might help to talk. Help who? I'm concerned for your welfare, Mr. Laser. The police would like to keep asking you questions, but I think it'll probably have to wait. It's likely you're in shock. Harvey Masters was one of them. We met every third Friday of the month after his family went down to the beach house after the kids came home from school, so we had the place to ourselves. He was... <laughs> he was such a surprising man. Once he filled the entire living room with flowers and candles. And another time he, he dressed up as the Maharaja. <laughs> he blacked himself up from head to toe. Of course it came off all over me, all over the carpet. So when I came in and, and I saw the blood and him holding his throat, I thought, well, I, I thought, different is what I thought. I didn't think for a moment it was real. Tell me about the letter you received last week. The letter? You killed my friend, so now I'm going to kill yours, all of them. Well, since I hadn't killed anyone, I, I, I didn't want to give it much thought. Have you any idea who might have sent it? I get 50 crank letters a week. They don't usually oblige by signing their names. Well, of course, there may be no connection at all between the letter and what happened to Mr. Masters. What a comforting thought. Did anyone else know you were meeting him? <laughs> no, no one. Tell me how you're feeling, Mr. Laser. I'm feeling rather numb, as a matter of fact. I'm feeling vulnerable. And I'm feeling scared. What if there is someone out there who wants to kill my friends? <laughs> oh, come on, he must have some idea who wrote the damn thing. Well, I'm sure he makes a few enemies in his profession. Exactly. Which means we're going to have to go through everything he's ever written. Where can I see the letter? Uh, first thing in the morning, Carl will pick you up. It is the morning, in case you hadn't noticed. Uh, 10.30. Doesn't anyone sleep around here? No, well, I'm on that, ain't you? G'day. Carl Sankovic for Sue York. someone who peddles gossip be that important people use gossip as a currency in the celebrity world the more you accumulate the richer you are i've never read his column well you don't need to you get it by osmosis michael jackson's deletions pamela anderson's inserts you know i reckon she should have left one in <laughs> given herself the option there you go you know about it we're talking about it that's why he's important 
Detective Carl Sankovic. Yes. Hi, I'm Trudy Semple, Mr. Laser's assistant. Dr. Jane Halifax. Hi. Hi. I'll um, take you through to the editor. Look, uh, it's just a rumour, isn't it, that um, they were on together? Sounds surprised. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I mean, Simon's not gay. A little outrageous, perhaps, but definitely not gay. Did you know he was a friend of Harvey Masters? Not really. Do you know Mr. Laser well? Well, I do his research and edit every word he writes. Who handles his mail? I do, unfortunately. Look, you can't always tell if they mean it. Hi, I'm Sue York. I'm the editor. How do you do? Hi. Please come through. Is Simon all right? Well, a little traumatised, of course. Sit down. Thank you. Now, we've located the letter. So did he receive it through the mail? Yeah. When? Oh, about a week ago. Is this typical? It's a little unusual. And you didn't think to report it? Well, it was hard to take seriously. Do you keep the envelopes? No, I didn't think to. How much of this stuff do you get? We fill a folder every two or three months. Do you read all of it? No, I don't, but Trudy does. She shows me the more lurid ones, then I make a judgement. Such as? Well, if they seem serious, I inform the police. Or maybe a private investigator. Why a private investigator? In case it's professionally motivated by the opposition. It's a publishing business thing. Now, this rumour about Simon being on with the QC. How did you people know about that? Is it true? You don't believe it either? Oh, well. In this business, one learns never to be surprised. How long has Mr Laser been with you, Miss York? A couple of years. Mm. He was freelance back then. He was my first appointment. And he's been good for the magazine? Oh. You might say that. So you showed Mr Laser the letter? Yes. What did he say? Oh. <laughs> Something appropriately dismissive. <laughs> Such as? that his friends could do with a bit of a cull. Check whether there's other letters by the same author. We've got five Leaper Arch folders. Davenport. Yeah, I'll take around the back. Okay. It's the wife. Can you give me a hand? Mrs. Masters, I'm Detective Senior Sergeant Harry Davenport, and this is Dr. Jane Halifax. She'll be assisting with the investigation. I'd just like to say how terribly sorry I are about your loss. I want to see the room where I don't think that was a very good idea. Mrs. Masters, if you're feeling up to it, we'd like to ask you some questions. Uh, may we sit? Yes, of course. I believe you spent the night at your beach house in Portsea. Mrs. Masters. Yes, I, um, I got there early afternoon. Margaret, please, please call me Margaret. Margaret, were you aware that your husband may have been seeing someone else? Seeing someone else like an affair, you mean? No. No, I don't think he had the time. What about Friday nights? I'm sorry? Well, on, on Fridays you would take the children down to Portsea and uh, your husband would follow on Saturday mornings. My husband worked very hard, Mr Davenport. By the end of the week, he was exhausted. Uh, do you have any reason to believe anyone may have visited the house on Fridays? Uh, Ashtrays, glasses, that sort of thing. 
My husband might have had colleagues around for a drink, but most of the time he went to bed. This is what he told you? Mr. Devonport, as my husband... as my husband might have said, where are these questions leading? The man who found your husband's body claims that he was having a relationship with your husband, that he would come here to the house on uh, the third Friday of every month. What do you mean, a relationship? I mean a sexual relationship. You mean a homosexual? <sighs> I don't think I've heard anything more hateful in my life. I'm sorry to have to say this, Mrs. Mars Margaret, but uh, <clears throat> we have no reason to believe that this man is lying. Well, I'm telling you, he is. Do you know a man by the name of Simon Laser? Simon Laser, yes, he works for A-List magazine. Why? Did you know your husband was acquainted with Simon Laser? You're not suggesting... Get out of my house. I'm sorry. Get out of my house. Out. Margaret, get away from me and get out of my bloody house! I'm sorry. You come in here you, and you, s you 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 smear my husband's name. You utter this bestial filth. Isn't it enough that I have to bury him? That I have to explain what can't be explained to my children? Margaret, if I could find get away and take your filthy lies with you. Ooh, well, she's calmed down a bit, Carl, then get someone to take her over to the morgue to ID the body. Then we'd better get her in to make a statement, right? I'd like to see Laser again. Me too. Oh, before you get to him. <laughs> Can't allow that, Jane. Well, when you question him again, he'll have to have a lawyer present. I don't have that inhibition. It's just police business. Simon Laser's told me one thing and Margaret Masters has told me another. I've just got to work out which one of them is telling me the truth. Absolutely, and I won't interfere in any of that. But if you want me to profile the letter right, I need to understand the man he's writing me to. You're just going to have to have one of us present. But if he thinks I'm working for you, he'll clam right up. But aren't you, Joe? Working for me? Carl, the good doctor wants to see Mr. Laser again. Can you make sure she stays out of trouble? Harry. Best I can do. If I could have a word alone with him, I think it'll help. I'm sure it would. Can't you wait in the car? No way. I'm due for a promotion at the end of the month. I'll tell him you're here. He won't do anything stupid. And how will it look on my record if he does? Do you really think he did it? If he did, why come and report it? Because he doesn't have an alibi. And it creates a favourable impression. He doesn't need an alibi. No one knew he was seeing Masters. Well, if there is some crazy out there, how come Laser doesn't know who it is? Well, maybe he does. Ask me in an hour. Jane, come in. Thanks. Fantastic place. Did you do it yourself? You sound surprised. Such attention to detail. You mean for a blind man? No, I... Uh... I just made some coffee. Would you like some? Thanks, that'd be great. So... What visual problem do you suffer from, if you don't mind my asking? Not at all. I suffer from macular degeneration. My poor eyes are wearing out. So your central vision's impaired? Yes, and bright light be thine enemy. Hence the dark glasses. That and uh, vanity, probably. It keeps things at a distance. And you like that? I'm a private person. How do you take it? Uh, black, one sugar, thanks. So, how do you get to know the people you write about? Why would I want to get to know them? <clears throat> Why don't we sit in here? Sure. Do you mind if we talk about the letter? Yeah, we must. It's just, you've got to have some idea who wrote it. Why do you say that? Well, the, the tone used, the words used. Doesn't it remind you of someone? If I knew who it was, don't you think I would have told the police? Okay, then you're going to have to give me a list of names. As many as you like. I need to profile the letter writer. 
just start with the people who know you best. Have you hurt someone recently? Betrayed them? Done something that they might see as cruel? I could give you a very long list of people who probably detest me, Jane, but none of them knew about Harvey. Well, then, it could be someone who's been watching you. Maybe for weeks or months. Do you think I need protection? Possibly. But then again, it's not you he's after, is it? What's he trying to do to me, Jane? Force me into isolation? And make me so afraid for my friends that I withdraw from life altogether? How could anyone do this to another human being? I'm afraid you're the only one that can answer that, Simon. Apart from the killer. Yep, no worries, mate. Harry wants us back there ASAP. What's the problem? Margaret Masters' alibi's just fallen over. She said she arrived at Portsea yesterday afternoon. Her neighbours report she didn't get there till well after midnight. Your neighbours in Portsea said you arrived very late last night. Both children stayed at boarding school for the weekend. There was no hurry for me to get there. But you said you left in the afternoon. I went for a drive. I needed some time to myself. I did some shopping. Till midnight. All right, Sergeant. Though it is none of your business, I have something of an addiction. All perfectly legal, of course, but lethal if you mix them together. I was sleeping it off on the side of the road. Did you know your husband was seeing someone, Mrs. Masters? No. I'll ask you again. Did you know your husband was seeing Simon Laser? Do I have to keep answering the same questions? Margaret, if your answer's checked out, we wouldn't have to ask. To suggest my husband was involved with Simon Laser, Mr. Davenport, to even suggest they were friends could not be further from the truth. In fact, Harvey despised the man ever since they met in court. Well, tell me about that. There was a defamation case some time ago, against the A-List magazine. My husband appeared for the libeled party, and he had Laser in the stand for almost three days. Reduced him to a quivering wreck from all accounts. Exposed him for the fraud he is and humiliated him in the media. A few weeks later, they bumped into each other in a bar, and Simon bought Harvey a drink to uh, show there were no hard feelings. Did you just tell me your husband despised the man? Yes, it is true. He, he came by to the house a couple of times and invited himself for dinner. But Harvey saw him as a, a curiosity, a figure of fun. Did uh, Liza know this, how your husband felt? I doubt it. I have no idea. Well, could your husband have been feigning disinterest? Why would he do that? Well, to keep you out of the picture, to keep Liza for himself. Mr. Davenport. Uh, is this the proper way to conduct an interview? To insult people to their faces? Mrs. Masters, I put it to you that you knew your husband was conducting a homosexual relationship. And furthermore, you knew he was involved with Laser. Not true. You were humiliated by his actions and wanted it to stop. I'd like to leave. You were desperately unhappy, but still, he would not stop. You'll be accusing me of murdering him next. Did you? No. But you can't account for your whereabouts on Friday night. You'd say you were passed out in your car somewhere between here and Portsea. You suggest that there was no relationship between your husband and Laser, whereas in fact he was more involved with Laser than he was with you. No. That is vile. I loved my husband. And I would have done anything for him. Did your husband love you? Interview suspended, 1435. We'll leave you here to discuss matters with your lawyer. Do you believe him? No more than I do Simon Layer, sir. Who 
and Linda. Taking this one seriously, are we? You better believe it. Come through. Mrs. Masters claims her husband despised you. Well, of course she's going to say that, isn't she? What woman's going to want to hear that her husband's been screwing around on her, especially with another man? Can you take your glasses off, Mr. Laser? Only if you want to, son. Exactly how did you meet Harvey Masters? Uh, we met in court. We were involved in a case together. According to his wife, he tore strips off you and publicly humiliated you. Well, he won the case, if that's what Margaret means by public humiliation. Nobody took it seriously. I gave him a call a couple of days later, we had a drink. He said, Margaret, were you on friendly terms with Mrs. Masters? I'd see her at functions with Harvey and we chat. She's a special person, she does a lot of charity work. And after the murder, almost two hours elapsed before you reported the matter, why is that? Fear. Shock. Disbelief. And I wanted to protect Harvey's family. From what? From the ignominy of knowing me. And in this state of uh, fear and disbelief, is it possible you may have removed the murder weapon? No. Did you see a knife or a stabbing implement of any kind? No. Let me get this clear. You didn't see the murderer, you didn't see the weapon, yet the victim literally died in your arms. No, I didn't, and yes, he did. Do you have any idea who may have sent you the letter? Anyone you may have offended lately? <laughs> I could give you a very long list. How long have you got? Well, all day, if necessary. Well, I haven't. I've got to be in court in an hour. <clears throat> Miss Quinn, no. Do you intend to charge my client, Senior Sergeant? Not at this stage. At any stage? Well, I don't have a crystal ball. Right, Simon. You have my number, you can give me a call. Sit down. I'm investigating a murder here and I will deal with any obstruction with the fullest force of the law. I think I can manage another half hour. I want to know everything about your relationship with Harvey Masters. Dates, times, frequency, carnal preferences. Where would you like to begin? Well, let's start with the last one, shall we? Simon Laser article in the magazines you've been allocated, and then every threatening letter for the month following. Okay? There you go. I'm particularly interested in letters like the ones I've just given you. Computer generated, anonymous, and to the point, or anything similar. Flag death threats with red, and could be of interest with blue. If you're not sure of anything, just ask me. Anything? Yeah. Huh. What are we going to send forensics? No, we'll start with the red ones and test for paper and typeface. Is that going to tell us exactly? How careful he's being, if he's moving around or using the same printer. Like trying to find a needle in a haystack. I wish it were that simple. Ah, spring rolls. Oh. Picking duck, Yum. fish, and blackbird. Hmm. Your place of mine. Mm. Well, seeing as you live in Doncaster. <laughs> and you're just around the corner, right? Mm. Hmm. <laughs> you okay? 
Yeah, I've got a lot on, honey, so I'm going to stay back for a while. And... No, don't wait up. All right. Love you. Yeah. Bye. Liza shouldn't be called a gossip columnist. She should be called a professional viper. You should read this stuff. <laughs> Evil bastard. Hmm. I think you should probably try and interview him again, see if you can get inside that brain of his. Oh, yeah, I can really see him agreeing to that. Hey, you um... Here, food on you. What? Here you go. Have you got a closer shot? Uh, what about these? Dr. Halifax. Uh, hope I haven't come at a bad time. No, not at all. Uh, this is Marty Vella, one of our photographers. Marty, this is Dr. Jane Halifax. Hi. I'm sorry, I didn't realise you were coming in. No, I just wanted to have a look in Simon's office, if that's okay. In his office? Why? Oh, it uh, helps with the profile. Sure. Trudy, do you want to...? Yeah. That'll do, Marty. Mm. So this is where the great man works. Mm -hmm. What's he like to work for? Simon. He's a riot. Exciting, unexpected, very professional, with a mass of contacts. It's a very big rap. Well, he's 25% of the reason this magazine exists. Are there any particular enemies and ones that he keeps targeting? Not really. I mean, Danny Minogue, but everyone has a go at her. I don't think it's Danny Minogue. <laughs> hmm. Someone going on holiday? He wants to do an article on Irish music. That's part of the research. He's obsessive about getting place names right, Oops. and of course, the spelling has to be perfect. Sorry. <laughs> so, how well do you know Mr. Laser? What kind of question is that? Well, outside your working relationship. Would you call him a friend? Simon doesn't have friends. At least, not ones he's prepared to admit to. Excuse me. Hello, Jane Halifax. Simon Laser wants to do a lie detector test. He what? Wants to clear things up. OK, I'll be right in. Yeah, sick of all the questions, he reckons. If it helps us, it helps him. Hmm. His solicitor, Linda Quinn, nearly had a bloody seizure. <laughs> oh, I bet she did. Well, she told him not to, but... It's become a bit of an issue with it. proof of innocence or some bullshit. A lie detector does. I mean, it's completely inadmissible, but the point is, should we do it? Well, see if he'll agree to an interview with me. I'll find out a lot more that way. Oh, I'm sure he will. I think he likes you. Oh, please, you're putting me off. You all right? Yeah, Megan phoned here last night. I was told I'd left. What, well, didn't you call to say you were working late? Yeah. I just neglected to tell her where I was working. Why? Come on, Jane. What am I going to say? Hi, Arnie. I'm working back at Jane Halifax's apartment. You know the one. Blonde, beautiful, intelligent, single. You ought to trust her more. Sure. Thanks for allowing this interview, Simon. It's more useful than a lie detector test, which tends to limit us to yes-no answers. Is the outcome the same? Well, a lie detector's not infallible. And you are? No, unfortunately. But it is a better guide. So, shall we begin? Why not? After all, I might be a murderer. You can expose my homicidal monomania. <coughs> right. Do you enjoy your work? Yes. Do you think your column causes harm to people? Yes. Does that bother you? No. How do you cause them harm? <laughs> By telling the truth. Can we talk about your family? Depends what you want to know. Well, let's start with your parents. Are they still alive? No. Do you have any brothers or sisters? Oh, good God, no. You wouldn't want too many of me running around, would you? <laughs> they broke the mould after you, didn't they? <laughs> they didn't, they should have. Where did you study journalism? Are you going to ask me any clever questions so you can make some overwhelmingly insightful interpretation? 
It'll be easier and quicker if you just answer these. Well, at least ask me something amusing to keep me interested. <sighs> All right. Did you kill Harvey Masters? No, I definitely did not. Did you love him? <laughs> Hardly. Why is that funny? <sighs> we were lovers. Let's just leave it at that. So the relationship was purely physical? It's not easy to describe. Why not? In a one-word answer. Well, you can use as many words as you like. We were friends. I used him for gossip in the legal world, and he used me for fun. What would you say if I told you I didn't believe you were having a relationship with Harvey Masters? Well, that's your prerogative. Just I can't find a single person who could comprehend that he could do this to his wife and children, only you. We were very discreet, as I said before. I don't think I believe you. Does it bother you that I'm calling you a liar? It bothers me you're denying the truth. You didn't answer my earlier question about where you studied journalism. Oh, God, Jane, such boring questions. <laughs> Perth. If you must know, Curtin University. Satisfied. Is that where you grew up, Perth? Mm, for most of the time. We moved around a lot. Where else did you live? Sydney, Adelaide, Tassie. What did your father do that you moved around so much? He was a sales rep. It's nothing fancy. It must have been hard to maintain friendships. What are friends, anyway? Look, I'm sorry, Dr Halifax. This is nowhere near as amusing as I had hoped, so I think I'll say good day. Sorry. I thought I'd try and start simple and then move into the more relevant questions, but I lost him. You think he was telling us the truth? No. It's impossible to prove without evidence. So it was a waste of time? No, not completely. I wanted to establish that he isn't a psychopath. And? Well, I think it's unlikely. But if he's a pseudologue, that's a compulsive liar to you, then I think he's a very good one. What is this because of Harvey Masters? No, I don't buy the way having a relationship. I've spoken to a lot of Master's friends and colleagues, and they all say the same thing. He was totally devoted to his family. Mm. Wouldn't be the first man who hid behind the facade of a solid marriage. What else you got? That he likes his job, that he likes hurting people. He may even have an Ubermensch complex. Thinks he's Superman. Well. Far superior to everyone else. Which is no doubt very interesting, but none of it proves he's guilty of murder. So, Jane, what's your profile on the kind of animal that could do this? Uh, someone who likes to kill up close and personal. Someone who likes to watch his victims die. Someone very bold and very clever. And good at disguising his trail. My bet he hasn't finished yet, either. This is Molly Johnson, 4 Talbot Avenue, Brighton. 
next door to Liza. What's he doing? Are you? Give me that. About time we had another chat with our friend Simon. That probably eliminates Margaret Masters as a suspect, but better check on her anyway, mate. See ya. Oh, it's you again. Come in. Just my glasses. Sorry, I'm a bit drugged up. All this stress. A uh, couple of things, Mr. Laser. <clears throat> Where have you been for the last two hours? Yeah. Sleeping. Do you know Molly Johnson? Yeah, she's my neighbour. Would you consider her a, a friend? Oh, well, yeah, I suppose. I mean, she brings in my mail and feeds my fish when I'm away. She was murdered about an hour ago, less than two kilometres from here. Tell me this isn't happening. She was killed by a single stab wound to the throat in a manner almost identical to that of Harvey Masters. <laughs> Simon, do you know if Molly had any immediate family we could call? No, no I, I don't think so. She, she was such a lonely old soul. Yeah. If you have no objections, I'd like to send some of my people round to uh, look over your house. Yeah, do you think it'd help? Uh, one more thing. You'd be doing us a big favour if you could ID the body. What? You want me to go out there and look at a stab woman? <laughs> no. The body's been taken to the morgue. I could go with you if you like, Simon. Serene. I expected to see the horror in her face. Mr. Lazer, is that Molly Johnson? Oh, yeah, that's her. Poor sweet Molly. Doesn't seem real. Somebody could do something like this. God will never redeem them. Do you believe in God, Simon? Not anymore. I just thought I'd drop by to see how you are. I'm afraid I can't um, offer you anything. We're moving down to the beach until the house is sold. The children have refused to move back. I can't say I blame them. I read the tribute to your husband in the paper. He really was a fine man. Yes. But he won't be remembered for that. It won't reverse what Simon Laser did to him. Even if he didn't kill Harvey, he murdered his reputation. 
and mine. If it helps, I don't for a moment believe that Laser was involved with your husband. Does it matter? It's what the public thinks. And even when the truth does come out, the papers won't give it coverage. Where's the sensation in that? I'm sorry. I appreciate you saying that. Oh, that's fine. I can't imagine what you must be going through. <laughs> Simon Laser has succeeded in everything he set out to do. And all because Harvey exposed and humiliated him in court for the defame and liar he is. Margaret, the children and you may need some help dealing with this. It's all right. We've, um, we've worked it all out. We're going to... Uh, Going to change our names, move into state, and uh, try and somehow get on with our lives. For the children's sake. Good morning. You're looking for Harry? Uh, <laughs> yes, I am actually. Oh, there you are. So what What's going on? Seems Simon Laser isn't the only celebrity we're dealing with. See the photo? Yeah. Do you know who took it? Some creep called Marty Vella. I met him at A-list yesterday. Hmm. Clearly doesn't give a shit about my marriage. Harry, why don't you let me talk to Megan? Oh, Jane. I, I made my bed, I'll lie on it. Or not, as the case may be. Hello, Jane Halifax. Yes. No, no, I'm happy to meet you. Sure. I'll be there. That was Sue York, the editor of the magazine. She says she has something for me. Really? Sue, hi. Hi. Like a coffee? Uh, no. L uh, listen, are you working for the police? Uh, yes. Is that relevant? I think perhaps I shouldn't have phoned. Well, I can talk off the record, up to a point. It's a free world. Although one's sadly lacking in privacy. Did you tell your photographer to stalk my colleague and I? Of course not. Why don't I believe that? Marty Vella is a free agent. He's on your payroll. Yeah, he works for a whole range of people. He offered me the photo. That's not why I phoned. It's not? There's something that I've been withholding from the police. Well, I'd have to pass that on. There are some letters containing certain threats, rather nasty threats that weren't in the best interests of the company. So I removed them from the file. The letter that you've got, it isn't the first one. It's a virtual copy of a letter that we got a long time ago. Go on. There's a man named Reno. He used to be a rower, double skulls. He and his partner, a guy called Paul Rogers, were in line for Olympic selection. Simon met them at a party, and Reno somehow offended Simon. And, well, he took it out on him in his column. In what way? He accused Reno of taking drugs. Smoking dope, to be exact. But he failed to mention, of course, that most of the other athletes at the party were also smoking. He just wanted to damage Reno. And he succeeded. He was dumped from the Australian team. Reno lost the plot for a while, he started drinking, he threatened to sue us. But his partner, Paul Rogers, he decided to end it all. And that is when the letters began. G'day, mate. How's it going? You Reno Radisson? Yeah, so what? I'm Detective Senior Sankovic and this is Detective Constable Fisher. I'd like to have a few words, mate. 
Could you remove your weapon, please, sir? What's the problem? No problem, sir. Just a routine check. Thank you, Mr. Radisson. We'd like you to accompany us to the station, where we'd like you to answer some questions regarding the death of Harvey Masters. Do you understand that? Piss off! Oh. Did you write this? No. What about these? No. Well, we think you did, Reno. And so does the magazine you sent them to. And so, too, probably your lawyers when they agreed on your advice to withdraw proceedings. That had nothing to do with any letters. Why did you abandon your lawsuit? I was told I didn't have a chance in hell. But didn't Simon Laser defame you by accusing you of drug taking, which ultimately led to you and your partner, Paul Rogers, being stood down from the Australian team? Isn't it true six weeks later Paul Rogers committed suicide? Yes, it's true. What's this about? Is, is somebody murdered Laser? He's not dead, Mr. Radisson, but two of his friends are, just like the letters say. I didn't write any letters. Do you know Harvey Masters? No. What about Molly Johnson? Who's she? They're both friends of Simon Laser's, very good friends of Simon Laser's. I'm surprised he's got any. I think you better get yourself a lawyer, Mr. Radisson. I think we're going to be here for quite some time. Do you still have a lawyer we can call? Look, so what if I wrote a couple of letters? What does that prove? Did you? It was a long time ago. This one arrived last week. Well, I certainly didn't write that one. It's an exact copy of the first one. Then someone must have copied it. Well, maybe the anger won't go away. The guy is a prick. He prints these lies about people and ruins their lives without suffering any consequences. The letter says you'll kill this I friend. just wanted him to know how it felt. To lose your best mate. Someone who you grew up with. We gave our rowing everything. Total commitment. Time, money, relationships for what? Stupid bloody dream. And that phony can't see bastard ends it all in some trashy magazine. You mean phony? Can't see. Well, well I was at this party. Uh, some high-profile radio guys, and I went looking for the loo and wound up in the study by mistake. And who's there snooping through the desk, reading private papers as clear as can be, not a pair of glasses inside? Simon Lazar nearly died when he saw me. We're going to charge you with making threats with menace. Do whatever you like, but I, I did not write that. Concentrate on anyone who had access to those letters, especially Sue York and those other parasites down at the A-list magazine. Oh, yeah, check on his lawyers as well. Sweet. Hey, Fish, you organise a warrant to search his place? Yes, boss. Where's Halifax? I've gone to see Laser. Heavens, you're not the police. Come in. I've been traipsing through the house, going through all my belongings. God knows what they expect to find. My sources tell me the police have brought someone in. Is that right? Anyone we know? Didn't your sources tell you? Unfortunately, they didn't know. Would you like a drink? Uh, yeah, that'd be great. Uh, would you mind? Uh, you'll find everything in the kitchen. There's some brie and crackers in the cupboard near the fridge. The glasses are on the trolley. Uh, yeah, I see them. So, how long have you had this problem with your eyes? 
As long as I can remember. A glass of wine and some gluey cheese. It's almost better than... Just that macular degeneration is normally associated with the elderly. Lucky me. Uh, what did you say the crackers were again? You did what? I took him to the hospital. He had three stitches. You set a rat trap and let him walk into it. Oh, give me the shits. Really? Jane. Well, it was what Reno said that got me thinking. A stupid bloody impulse. I decided to set him a test. Scientific, naturally. I still think he's a fraud. Is that a professional opinion or the verdict of a rodent exterminator? Oh, ha ha. Says he, the man who let Margaret Masters take her best shot at him. Why would anyone pretend they're blind? I mean, it doesn't make sense to me. Haven't you noticed? He always sees what he wants to see. Yeah. Is that in Halifax? Yes, Linda. Yeah. Yeah, all right, I'll be there. Bye. Laser solicitor. Just when you think things couldn't get any worse. Have a nice day. You too. Okay, right, I'll catch up with you later. You go ahead. Well, well, well. Ten points for attending. It sounds a lot worse than it was. Oh, does it? You set a trap for a blind man causing a wound that requires five stitches. Is there a positive spin on that? Well, he's not technically blind. It was three stitches, actually. So, what do you think of my client? I think I'll just say sorry and leave. Off the record? Oh. Well, the last time I spoke off the record, I was examined in court for three days. You have my word. All right, what do you want to know? Is he mad? Is he lying? Did he do it? I don't know. I'm not sure. And even if I did, I don't know if I'd tell you. Should I be afraid for my life? Are you? Sometimes. I think your client's suffering from something called Pseudologia Fantastica. He's a pathological liar. He aims to create a whole new identity for himself and his readers. Then the question is, can he differentiate between fantasy and fact? Well, sometimes the fantasies can take on a life of their own. And if he becomes a centre of attention, then the events that follow can begin to outweigh anything else, even the truth. I'll tell you something in confidence. I'm seriously thinking of quitting this case. Big Co, National 9 News. In a stunning admission, Reno Radisson, a former Olympic hopeful, who was disgraced 18 months ago after allegations of drug taking, admitted to sending death threats to celebrity magazine columnist Simon Laser. Police refused to comment on the connection between the threatening letters and Master's death, but inquiries are ongoing. Radisson has been released on bail and is due in court at a date to be set. This is Fleur Flannery for National 9 News. Jane, Jane, this is outrageous. Hey, have you seen the news? That they've let that madman out on bail. Oh, he hasn't been charged with the murder, Simon. The guy sends me letters threatening the lives of my friends and they turn up dead. Well, he claimed he didn't write the last one. He says it was copied. <sighs> I've never heard of anything so ridiculous in all my life. Anyway, I don't want to think about it. Let me give me ulcers. How's the foot? I feel as though I should tell you the truth. I could see the rat trap all along. I knew you were testing me and I just couldn't resist the temptation. But that's not why I rang. There's an exhibition at the National Gallery at two o'clock. I'm doing the launch. All my friends will be there. Why don't you come along? I don't think it's appropriate, do you? Oh, come on, don't be so stuffy. Anyway, it'll give you a chance to look into my world, see me in action. But ethically, it's a bit ropey, Simon. Oh, rubbish. I'm not a patient. You're not the police. I just don't think it's a good idea. I'll tell you what you want to know. I promise I won't disappoint you. Can you believe this exhibition? Simon! Simon! Simon. 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 
Ladies and gentlemen, this surely is installation art in its purest form. What more fundamental installation is there than the humble loo standing here resplendent in the midst of a kicked down dunny? It is at once profound and utterly Australian, utilitarian and antipodean. A press of the button, and what do we hear? Not the prosaic sound of a flush, but the sounds of the ocean. The ultimate destination of everything that goes down the drain. All hail to the noble W.C. Lou, forgotten cousin of W.C. Field. <laughs> and all hail to a bright new star in the pantheon of Australian art, Betty Lou Mandeville. <laughs> Enjoy it, darling. It's all downhill from here. Why do they invite him when they know what he does? Because he will always attract an audience. Well, what about the poor artist? Well, that's not art, that's demolition. New York, New York. So good they named it twice. How'd I do? Quotable as always. Mm, let's see if these phonies are real, but they do face to face. Uh, Simon, I wanted to ask you something. I've always changed. It's about Curtin University. Oh. Jane, don't you ever play. Well, it's just that you said that that's where you did your degree in journalism and uh, they actually have no record of it. <sighs> well, that's because I was only there for a few months. After that, it was a case of different town, different university. But I'm sure you said... If I knew you were going to check up on me, I would have explained it better. Look, you're here now. Let your hair down. Enjoy the party. Again? Thanks, lady. Thank you. Home, James. No, Simon. Get a taxi. Don't be selfish. I didn't leave that on. Best assistant I ever had. It's just not fair. I thought it was over. I thought they had enough. Simon, what was Trudy doing here? Taking a shower, obviously. Waiting for me to return. How did she get in? She had a key. Does anyone else have a key? Only Molly. 
Willie had a kid. Simon, were you and Trudy having a relationship? We were dabbling. Not that anyone knew. Anyone at work? It would only have got in the way. Okay, Harvey Masters, Molly Johnson, and now Trudy. Simon, you've got to help me out here. What is a murderer trying to say to you? <laughs> that I don't deserve to have friends. <laughs> I could end all this in a flash. If I didn't exist, my friends wouldn't be in danger. Well, that's a, a rather drastic solution, don't you think? The greater good for the greater number, my life for theirs. Pretty good deal. How certain are we about the time of death? Oh, well, the uh, external signs are fairly obvious. Which means she was killed within... Oh, three hours of discovery? Kind of lets our lordship off the hook, doesn't it? Hmm. Almost feel sorry for the bastard. Don't look around, we're being photographed. Him sooner. Take a look. His two favourite subjects, Laser and Trudy. He's probably the only one that knew they were on together. And then there's these. Shot after shot of Trudy. Do you think she knew they were being taken? I doubt it. He's not that kind of photographer. Didn't you know it? The boy's got form. What for? Stalking, harassment, Creating public nuisance. Who did he stalk? One Ronald David Knightley, a former employer of his. Marty said he was in love with the man's girlfriend. Though she barely knew he existed, it seems he was trying to prove that her boyfriend wasn't worthy. Well, something of an obsession, is he? I'm a photographer. Excuse me? He's a celebrity. I sell photographs to magazines. How many of these you sold? Any? Not yet. Oh, who's this? Husband's a surgeon. More money than sense. Laser's just comic relief. What about all these ones of Laser and Trudy? You know, given Laser's passion for secrecy, I reckon you may have been the only one that knew about the affair. You and the murderer, of course. Unless you're one and the same. Where were you this afternoon? Well, I was working in my dark room. Oh, I? Yeah, I work alone in my dark room. What time did you arrive at Laser's place? Well, as soon as I heard the... Bulletin on the police band? Yes or no? I've got a scanner in my dark room. Well, pity you weren't an hour or two earlier. Maybe he was. Let me show you some photos we've taken of Trudy Sample, Mr. Vella. Look at him. Look at them! You loved her, didn't you? Did she love you back? Or did she ignore you like the last one? It wasn't like that. Answer the question. Well, I loved her, all right. But if you couldn't have her, no one else could. Is that right? No, it's not true. And she chose laser over you. Well, she got caught up in all this. Couldn't see through all this bullshit. She couldn't see through it. Did you kill Trudy, Mr. Vella? Did your obsessive jealousy make you want to teach her a lesson? No. But you couldn't have her, could you? I was prepared to wait. That's why I was taking the photos. I thought if I could prove to her that Laser was fooling around, then she'd dump him. I swear that's the truth. I've had enough. 
Get a statement from him. So, where to now? I was hoping you could tell me. Well, I suspect Simon Laser's still the key. Well, except he's got a perfect alibi. You know he didn't come true. Yeah, well, that's what worries me. It's too perfect. What do you mean? I just don't like the coincidence. He calls me up, invites me out at the precise moment that someone's being murdered in his home. Well, doesn't that mean he couldn't have done it? <sighs> Maybe. Unless the time of death's wrong. Well, you were there. I mean, you checked the body yourself. Yeah, I know. I'd still like to see what the pathologist has to say. I've been looking into his background. There are little things that just don't add up. Mm, I what? Like, he started an apprenticeship. He didn't do journalism at all. What does that matter? It might. Listen, can I take those photographs home? I'd like to have a closer look. Sure. All I know is I got three dead bodies and bugger all idea who did it. See you, Carl. Yeah. I'm packing it in. You should as well. Something right under her nose is here, Carl. Should be steak and chips. Come on, come and eat. Ah, wait till breakfast, I think. I'm not going home. Something Jane Halifax said is. <laughs> anyway, my wife's a light sleeper and I'm gonna wake her up. She'll only worry where I've been. Well, mine can put on a bloody feed and slip into something sexier. Good on you, Carl. See you, mate. See ya. You've reached the voicemail of the police pathology department. Please leave your message after the time. Harry Davenport, homicide. I want to talk to someone about rigor mortis, whether you can delay the symptoms. Uh, I've got your report. I've read it, of course. Just need to have a chat. Ta. So party ice? Yeah, in the freezer at the back there, man. <clears throat> How many uh, bags do people normally get? You can get as many bags as you like, mate. Yeah, but uh, you'd notice if someone bought a lot, yeah? You work here regularly? No, mate, I'm just a casual. Yeah, look, I'll just have some gum, mate. Here, what's that worth? It's a buck, mate. Clever bastard. A water timer. Carl? It's me. Jane Halifax said something to me about Lays are doing some kind of apprenticeship you never finished. Did she elaborate on that to you at all? No? Hmm. I got a funny feeling it's got something to do with plumbing. Yeah, in the meantime, uh, grab Fisher and meet me around at Lays as soon as you can, yeah?
I'm looking at photograph number 374. It's of Simon Laser alongside his home. Looks like he's been on a shopping expedition. Possibly to a camping store, and he's also carrying a jeans a go-go bag, which is not his speed at all. Now, the photo looks fairly recent. Look, these may be the paranoid musings of an insomniac who's finally given up on sleep, but I'm wondering if our gossip columnist is about to reinvent himself. Change identities. Message after the time. Harry, it's Jane. Look, I'm on my way to A-List magazine. I think I know what Laser's up to. Can you meet me there as soon as possible? Thanks. Harry Davenport, please. Yes. Call Carl Sankovich. Harry! Ring Triple O! Harry! This is Detective Constable Ruth Fisher. We have a member down at 2 Talbot Avenue. Trifle impertinence, rifling through a man's possessions. The police have a warrant to search these premises. But you're not the police, are you, Jane? I'll take that. It belongs to a friend. Obviously someone you admire, since you seem to have assumed his identity. Well, uh, he won't be using it anymore. So can I... Um, help you with something, or are you uh, just browsing? You know, I've been looking into your background, Simon. Trying to understand the victim in order to understand the murderer. The victim, I presume, is me. Quite a traumatic childhood. Adopted out by a teenage mother. Who cares? 
My adoptive parents were perfectly adequate. And still very much alive. Except they didn't send you to journalist school, did they? You did six months of a plumbing apprenticeship. I never picked you for a snob. Let's just say I don't think your change in hair colour is a frivolous whim. Any more than the remarkable improvement in your eyesight. You need the sarcasm to me, Jane. You're way, way out of your depth. Come on, Harry. Don't you bail out on me now, mate. Harry, hi, it's Jane. Look, I'm on my way to A-list magazine. Oh, shit. Oh, Stay with him, OK? At some point, you have to face reality, Simon. You can't keep living a fantasy. You're right. I'm bored. I'm bored with all this. I'm bored with the police. And most of all, I'm bored with you. Or is it that you can't stop? That you're so absorbed in all the lies, you just can't give it up? Oh, come on, Jane. You can do better than that. Impress me. So who's the murderer? Do we know who the monster is? Harvey Masters must have given you a dreadful three days in court. Was it so humiliating that you had to kill him? Of course, you had to humiliate him first, didn't you? That's what the whole homosexual setup was about. Poor Harvey. He must be turning in his grave. He always hated dirty poofters, as he so eloquently put it. But why did Molly Johnson have to die, Simon? An innocent old lady. Just to keep the charade going? To prove the death threats were real? Good heavens. Next you'll be accusing me of murdering Trudy. How did I manage that? Had a guess. I'd say it had something to do with disguising the time of her death. It's a nice theory. You got any proof? Well, like you said, I'm not police. I think I might go up to the roof for some air. You might like to join me, Jane. You wouldn't want to miss my grand finale. You should see the view from up here. Look at me, Jane. So this is how it's to end? Pretty spectacular, huh? Always wanted to go out with a bang. Wouldn't have thought this is a big enough stage for you. There's no audience, only me. Where's the glory in that? You always did underestimate my power, didn't you? I'll be splashed across every newspaper tomorrow. I'll be on every magazine in the shelf. Only to be forgotten in the next edition? Don't tell me you're going to deny yourself the court case when you've got the starring role. Don't you mock me. They haven't got me yet. Shoot! I won't have to jump! It's all right, Carl. Mr. Laser's just showing off. I'm trying to get a bit more attention, aren't you? You really don't think I could do it, do you? No. Because even now, you think there's some way out of this. That lesser minds will lose and you will win. And somehow you'll lie your way free. This space, baby. Okay. Thanks. I hope that's the good French stuff. Of course. Nothing but the best for you. 
It was ice that interfered with the time of Trudy's death. The shower melted it. He rigged it with a timer to go on while he was out. She was dead long before he went out with you. I'm impressed. Well, it was you that put the idea into my head, saying his alibi was too perfect. Oh, we make a good team. <laughs> yeah. Gave us a bit of a scare, mate. I gave myself a bit of a scare, Joe. Oh, I uh, didn't bring a card. What? Didn't want to complicate things with the wife. Megan will be here in a second. Oh. You don't want me to go, do you? Oh, I've got the sympathy vote at the moment. I think we should probably quit while we're ahead. See you in the trenches, Harry. Who is the champion? Who is the champion? Yo, yo, yo!